can we just say, for argument's sake, half the world is uh, Christian and half the world is uh, Muslim. I know it's not true, but just bear, you know, just for the sake of this uh, rubbish, let's let's take that as a fact, right? That means at least half the world is wrong, right? Because the, the two don't exclusively go together. If one group's right, the other's wrong, okay? That means half the world might as well worship a masturbating hippopotamus. Because it will do them just as much good, right? They'll say the prayers to it, they can worship it, they can bow down to it, and everything else that goes along with it. Do you know what I think? I think they're both wrong. I, don't, I, don't, I have a problem with religion, and that's what this little uh, rant is about. Um, my kids have started school recently, and we recently had Parents' Day, Parents' Evening, you know, and they're only four and five, so my daughter's been in school for a year, and she's, um, bless her heart, she's she's obviously learning about things, and she, she comes home and, oh, Daddy, you mustn't do that or you'll go to hell, and oh, I've got a problem with that. You know, they're at a real impressionable age. I, I could uh, I could teach my daughter that there's a a sewer monster and she would believe me. I could I could in, convince my daughter into anything, anything you'd like. Pick something I could make her believe it. Of course, you know she's a little girl and I'm a father and you know whatever you impression on her, she's going to believe. She she doesn't have any reason not to believe me. I wouldn't lie to her, right? So, someone's been filling a head full of rubbish, so I went along to the school and I said, um, what's the deal with religion? Is this a religious school? Do you teach religion? Blah, blah, blah. And they said, uh, well, yeah, we, we teach religion, but we, you know, we don't teach them a specific religion is true. We just teach them that, you know, this is what some people believe, and this is Christianity, and this is this, and this is that. And I have no problem with that. Kids learning about the world is a good thing, so great good for them but they do still have assemblies and they do still pray at the end they said we have you know we have a prayer at the end and I have a problem I do have a problem with that because I don't want my kids heads being filled full of rubbish and I think it is rubbish I mean here's a good example take well it's a perfect example take Scientology the creator of this religion a science fiction novelist who wrote about Dungeons and Dragons and, and uh, space aliens and whatever, whatever. He was a science fiction novelist. And he started his own religion. And the religion believes that there's this alien overlord called Zenu, who, well, I mean, let's stop there. There's no need to carry on. There's a lot of what anyone could see as, well, I think so, obviously, apparently not. There's hundreds of thousands of followers about this religion that, that worships an alien fucking overlord and they believe that there's thetans that are attached to your body and you have to uh, uh, oh it goes on I haven't explained it very well but my point stands you know a religion created by a science fiction novelist and there's hundreds of thousands of people worldwide who believe it why? you know <laughs> It is crazy. Don't get me wrong, I believe there was some fellow called Jesus, and I believe he did walk on this world. And I'm sure, you know, he existed, and I'm sure he told a lot of fancy stories, and, and you know, maybe he had a couple of tricks up his sleeve to make some of them seem half true. I don't know, but it's, it's not true. Come on. And, you know, Chinese whispers, this happened 2,000 years ago, and, and the Bible was written... Uh, a long time after his death, I, don't, I won't, don't quote me because I'm not going to say a number, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't written in his day. So, you know, you've got father passes a story to son who passes it on to his son and so on and so on. And, you know, the old Chinese whisper syndrome, someone embellishes it, someone embellishes it a bit more. Then it's translated from the original Latin or Hebrew or whatever it could have been written in into English. And I'm sure there's lots of things mistranslated and lost in translation and... You know, I like to think I've got a bit of common sense. I, I like to think I'm not stupid. 
And guess what? I'm not religious. And I don't, you know, I don't want to offend anyone. If you've got your faith, if you've got your religion, good for you. I hope it makes you happy. But, you know, I also hope you're not wasting your life worshipping the masturbating hippopotamus, you know, because you might as well, as far as I'm concerned. Someone's wrong. Who's wrong? The Christians? The Muslims? Half the world is stupid. Half the world is stupid. Talking of stupid things, I read on the uh, BBC News website, there's uh, some fella taking God to court, trying to sue God. Guess where that's happening? I don't think you need more than one guess, do you? Only in America. Bless them. I do love Americans. I do love their... Well, I don't love it, actually, but it humours me. Because I'm laughing because it's nothing more than laughable. I'm going to take God to court. And it actually got to court. It actually got to court. And then it was thrown out because they couldn't serve papers to God. And the fellow argued, well, you know, God's everywhere. And it goes on. But no, so, uh, yeah, like I, I will just reiterate that point, if you, you know, I don't want to upset anyone, I don't want to, if you've got your religion, good for you, but, uh, you know, I'd also invite you to take a step back and think about it for a minute, logically. And there's stories in the Bible that can be scientifically proved aren't possible. And I won't bore you, but the, for instance, the uh, Moses and his horde of followers, it's alleged that they wandered the desert for as nomads for years, ten years, whatever. And if you've got a whole bunch of thousands of people wandering the desert for ten years, there's going to be some archaeological evidence of this, and there isn't. And it goes on. But like I said, I'm not going to bore you. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Dungeons and Dragons. I don't believe in ghosts, pixies, dragons. I don't know. Anything like that. You've got to have some real tangible evidence for, to, you know, to catch my attention. And maybe the problem is, perhaps where it all stems from is, you know, I was forced into Sunday school as a kid and you know, if it's something you don't want to do and you're forced into it, you rebel against it, I suppose, but... But also, no, it's not that at all, like I said, you know, I like to think I'm not stupid. I like to think I'm quite clever. And in fact, you know, maybe I, I can kind of relate and understand to, to religion in, in one way only, and that... in, in, in the way I can relate to that is that my daughter's, like I said, five, and she's got the whole death thing going on at the minute. Daddy, am I going to die? Yes, dear. Daddy, are you going to die? Yes, everybody dies. I don't want to die, Daddy. And you know, and it really breaks my heart. You know, how do you explain to a five-year-old daughter who you keep telling, don't worry, everything's going to be okay, I'll look after you. You don't need to be afraid of anything. But Daddy, I don't want to die. You know, what do you do with that? And it, bra it breaks my heart. It does. It breaks my heart. It's horrible. And, you know, I'm sure it's easy to say to, for people to say to their kids, don't worry, you'll go to heaven. It's, it's a cop-out. You know, it's an easy... So I can kind of understand it from that perspective, but... <coughs> anyway enough of my rubbish. Now whatever your name is, ready for the big surprise.